Minneapolis. In Minneapolis. Aaliyah Boston is ready to punch her ticket. Death taxes and Aaliyah Boston. We have one more game, Holly, we're not going home. We gotta go through a, a quality team to win a national championship. South Carolina waits to see who they will play Sunday night. The Huskies can taste it. We got one more game. We're not satisfied with this. Oh, yeah, the stage has been set, and only two teams remain. South Carolina and UConn meet once again this season, but this time there's a lot more at stake, and there's a core trio of Gamecocks who want all the smoke. Destiny Henderson, Aaliyah Boston, the best player in women's college hoops, and Zaya Cook were, Zaya Cook were huge the last time these teams matched up, but UConn and Kristen Williams, Paige Beckers, they have a lot to prove because they did take an L to this South Carolina team earlier this season. Welcome to Countdown to the Final, presented by Invesco QQQ. I'm Christine Williamson, and we welcome to campus for the first time ever, Megan McEwen. Hi, how are you? I'm fantastic. Well, I get to hang out with you first off. No, that's second that's, off. That's obviously going to be. I mean, it's right. obviously the highlight. And then right. it's Championship Sunday. What more could you possibly want? And these are two of the best teams in the country. They were supposed to play twice this year. It only happened one time. So why not just make it as dramatic as possible and make the final matchup between these two teams? Oh, that's how we like it. We love the drama. We love the drama. I'm all about the drama. Um, let's talk about how both of these teams got here before we look at this matchup as a whole. Uh, and take a look. Go back to last Friday when both teams punched their ticket to the championship. We started Start with South Carolina taking on Louisville in the final four. In under 10 seconds to go in the third, Destiny Henderson misses, but Aaliyah Boston, that is why she's the best player in college basketball right now. She has been a stud all year long, so consistent. 23 points, 18 rebounds. She averages a double-double, but it's her ability to knock down the three that makes her so scary. Not a lot of big players want to come out and guard at the perimeter. Oh, my gosh, and she gets lit. Also, her hair is amazing. Incredible. Uh, <laughs> she had, in this matchup, 23 points, 18 rebounds. Uh, South Carolina won that one 72 to 59, advanced to the national championship, obviously. Uh, what were your takeaways in that win for South Carolina? Well, first and foremost, I was so impressed with the way that South Carolina found balanced scoring. All five starters scored in double figures that game. I was also so impressed with their size down low in the paint. Louisville's a team that's really athletic, doesn't necessarily possess as much size as South Carolina, and the Gamecocks were really able to expose that, especially down the stretch. But ultimately, Aaliyah Boston, I mean, come on, 23 points, 18 rebounds in a Final Four game. That's just what she's been able to do all year long. She's showing why she's one of, if not the best player in the country. And I was really impressed with how poised she stays. Louisville was coming down to double team her multiple times, yet Boston has great vision. And when she gets the ball inside and gets just like a little bit of a paint touch through South Carolina's offense, everybody else slows down and calms down and stays patient. Love that about her. That's that experience. Let's go to the other game that led to this national championship game. UConn taking on the number one seed the Stanford this is in the third quarter they were down one and Paige Beckers always gets buckets she is the mid-range assassin and she has been excellent in this tournament averaging 15 points in fact in the NCAA tournament and it's also leading the team getting the ball inside giving things on the defense side of the ball Paige Beckers is a force to be reckoned with I also love how incredibly hyped she is she just looks like she's having so much fun when she plays basketball she had 14 points five assists they won that one 63 to 58 so what did UConn show you on Friday well UConn is playing its best basketball right now and this is a team that struggled from the standpoint of consistency throughout the year they actually have five points headed into this championship game which is not something you often associate with UConn basketball but the Huskies dealt with a lot of injuries throughout the season Paige Beckers had to miss a big chunk after dealing with an ankle injury you also had guard AZ Fudd who missed a lot of that first half of the season who has come on really strong especially in this NCAA tournament so having so many people in and out of the lineups the Huskies have finally peaked and I tell you what this is the best time if you're going to peak Right, uh, NCAA tournament time, March, April. What are the months right now? <laughs> April. That's the day it exactly. is. That's when you want to peak championship hey, it's March Sunday. Madness. <laughs> you know, it gets a little confusing once it gets to April. Uh, speaking of peaking, I would say obviously we've seen Sue Bird and Diana Taurasi do a number of things in their career. I would say they peaked during the broadcast that was also going on uh, in the Final Four. Take a look at this. But I'm like, we got our own show, dog. We have our own show. Here we are. They told me I was going to be on with Snoop Dogg. Where's Snoop Dogg? Is Larry Bird your great grandfather? I was a huge Don Stanley fan. He was one of my idols growing up. I used to steal the rubber band trick from her. Who would win in a game of horse? 
Y'all talk, talking trash out here? Yeah, I talk trash to Coach Ramon. Like, yo, be quiet, I man. I got know. this. I already know, Tulashi. I already know what we're coming with you. Somebody needs to shoot more threes. Just shoot more threes the whole game. Why not? <laughs> I was trying to have the greatest time of my life at Stanford, too, but Diana I got rejected. Diana wanted to go to Stanford. Diana Taurasi, she did something she didn't want to do? I just, I, I don't believe that. Who would you want taking the last shot of the game? I'm so mad. I thought I had the last Super jersey she played in. He did. Now I watched the car when he won. <laughs> now it's my car rag. Wow. The disrespect. Now it's a car rag, Sue. Have I crashed a Yukon party here? We needed some balance. I believe you did. <laughs> well, that's a big mistake. <laughs> you know you can't talk about Stanford without talking about that. No. Nope. Free. Nope. Nope. hook us up with something. They let me put it on. Yeah. When I tell you, <laughs> it smells like <laughs> Oh, I bet. <laughs> Who has a better jumper? I feel bad if I don't say myself. Check the percentages. Yeah. You, know you want to go for five? You're so oh, greedy, man. Stuart. Five. Let someone else win something. And we played on the best Olympic team of all time. We did. we did. We did. That team was so fire. The Hands best down. team I've ever played on in my I life. So yeah. I was pounding yeah. beers and cheeseburgers in college. <laughs> Good. I was more of a plate of tater tots and two donuts oh, every see? morning. Hey, that's just as bad. <laughs> I was a grilled cheese. You're Whoa. grilled cheese. More things change, the more they stay the, the same. same. Oh, God. <laughs> Ever since I was a child, I wanted to be friends with them. I feel like I kind of am their friend because I'm no NECA. Uh, you can catch Sue and Diana tonight at 8 Eastern as a part of ESPN's mega cast coverage on ESPN2. And obviously, it's you're not going to want to miss that. Okay, listen, Diana Taurasi is my all-time favorite women's basketball player, uh -huh. all-time favorite basketball player in general. And the fact that she has as much personality as she does, and she, oh, yeah. I want her to have her own comedy show. She, she is should. hilarious. They're amazing. Um, anyways, <laughs> now it's time to choose Wisely Presented by Wendy's. And we're going to take a look at the five finalists for the Women's John R. Wooden Award. Caitlin Clark has gotten the social media highlights, but Aaliyah Boston has already taken home several national accolades and it was and was only the only finalist to make the final four so how do you feel like this award is going to shake out first off i take that five any day of the oh week to go against right? anyone else's five they want to put out on the floor but this is what we're seeing right now the competition is so high but Aaliyah boston has been excellent this season she averages a double double she's already won national player of the year mm -hmm. awards but what's impressed me most is just how consistent she has been all season long then you have melissa smith from baylor who is a force to be reckoned with because she's six four but can step out and knock down the three and defensively i mean Ooh. boom come on Ooh. i mean you're Get not driving into the lane if smith is in there she has right. a lot of WNBA looks at the moment then caitlin clark the best point guard in college basketball, and she is so exciting to watch. She can hit logo threes, like right there. Like, right. that's Makes a different zip easy. code than that gym is actually in. And the Nas Hillman from Michigan, who has just been unbelievable. 2,000 points, 1,000 rebounds for Michigan history. She's done a great job really becoming a great passer out of double teams and someone who is, again, getting a lot of WNBA looks between right. a first-round draft pick. Ryan Howard from Kentucky has been an excellent guard throughout her tenure in Lexington, and she's been another player that's just consistent. She can just go out and get you a bucket when right. you need to. And if you want to go to the next level, you have to be able to create your own shot, and she has that potential. People are talking, obviously, like we have been all season, about Leah Boston. How much of a tr problem is she going to be for UConn tonight? I mean, an incredible problem. They might want to start guarding her when she walked off the bus in Minneapolis because that's <laughs> how much of a problem she can be. But Boston is just so smart, and she's very concise with her movements, which is makes her a tough guard. Not to mention, she's a great passer out of the double team anytime that UConn's going to try to maybe throw somebody down at her even in one-on-one -on -one situations Boston has such great vision that she can kick it out to guards in the perimeter or go high low down to another post player for easy looks but Boston is a player that UConn's going to have to look to box out and try to ultimately limit touches inside and that starts with perimeter defense because the tighter that perimeter defense is guards can't get it inside the Boston uh, fans I know that we're saying that Leah Boston she's obviously the favorite but you can have a say in who wins the John R. Wooden award presented by Wendy's cast your vote at the website below and the winner will be announced tomorrow can I just say let's go it is tournament time believe it can't dunk it does she yes throws it down this is it time to shine in all our senses What do you think he would say to you in this moment? He would say, go with this Kaylee. That's what he would say. You know we got it. You know we got it.
trip to the final four on the line. Brown Turner for the tie. Got it to go. Westbrook finds Williams, and that is the dagger. Gamecocks are becoming a staple in the final four. The South Carolina Gamecocks are one win away from title number two. And we know everybody in the world doesn't think we're going to win, so we're like, we might as well just prove everybody wrong. The, the Connecticut Huskies will play for a national title. We got one more game, we're not satisfied with this. You know we got this. not my first time watching that, but I got chills watching it again. And I'm very excited to welcome in our next guest, Monica McNutt, who's been covering the tournament from the jump. So we're very excited to have you talk about some of these things because we want to give away some awards for the tournament as a whole. Okay, Moni, uh, first of all, you look good. Love your outfit. Um, let's start with best Cinderella story. Who would you give that to? Best Cinderella. You know, we've had some really tough uh, candidates for that one, Christine, but I think I'd have to give that one to, uh, let me see here, South Dakota. It was a tie. It was really close for me between South Dakota and Creighton, but South Dakota knocked off a Baylor squad. They put up a terrific fight to get potentially into the Final Four, or excuse me, into the Elite Eight versus Michigan. Hannah Shervin, Chloe Lamb, the player of the year out of the Horizon League. I mean, I think that was the group that really turned heads and had the most fly Cinderella run, if I may. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, Monica. I completely agree with you as well. I also liked Creighton just because of the way they won that Iowa game to go to the Sweet 16. But, I mean, that is pretty much your picking from two excellent choices. All right, next question for you. Best game of the tournament that you saw? Best team, I think you said? Or what did you – best game? I said best game. Yes, ma'am. Best game. Okay, this is easy, y'all. The first <laughs> double overtime game – after the Sweet 16 round, and it goes to NC State and the UConn Huskies. I mean, come on. There were so many points in that ball game where it looked like during regulation, the Huskies were poised to pull away, but NC State refused to be knocked down and denied. And I'm gonna come back to this game a little bit later, I think for some of our superlatives, but I was just thoroughly impressed with the way the Wolfpack competed. And then honestly, I mean, Paige Beckers goes for 15 points in the double overtime periods to finish that game with 27. Just incredibly impressive, just a great ball game. I know y'all saw the clip of me jumping up and down in them leather pants yeah. in the studio. It, it deserves all of that. <laughs> Dang it, I was gonna mention that. I was like, yes, I know that was your best game because we saw you. We saw you, how you reacted to that game. And yes, uh, anytime you can get extra basketball it's always a good thing right um okay let's go to best uh, absolutely breakout performer okay this one was really hard christina megan it was really really hard and i think some people will be like your selection isn't a breakout performer but i do think she had a breakout performance and i'm going with joanne allen taylor of texas and in particular i'm talking about that game versus ohio state for the texas longhorns there were so many different players that could have gone up for this word hannah award hannah Shervin from south dakota state was one of my other candidates but i just think for joanne allen taylor i think the excitement of some of the youth on Texas' squad, Rory Harmon has been terrific defensive player of the year in the Big 12. Um, the bigs in the post are both underclassmen for that group. But Joanne Allen-Taylor was poised in the moment that her team needed her the most, and she came up with big time buckets. Like that's the type of performance that puts you on the radar for scouts looking at you in the next level. So I thought that was a big, big performance from her. Monica, I completely agree with that. I also liked Louisville's Haley, Haley Van Lith in this tournament just because she was so consistent. Yes, we know how great of a player yeah. she is, but her consistency day in and day out throughout that whole entire tournament was so impressive. And she just plays with so much passion and swagger, which is just so much fun to watch. All right, we got one more for you. Agreed. Best play of the whole entire tournament. What you got for us? Okay. All right. So, y'all, I mentioned the double <laughs> overtime game, but do you know that there were six seconds on the clock and NC State was down three at the end of that first overtime? And I just also want y'all to know that how difficult it is to properly execute an inbounds play when there is no pressure. That's but when true. the game is on the line, it becomes even more paramount. And the way that NC State was able to execute that inbound pass and Jakia Brown Turner getting loose for a corner three off of a screen, a fade, fade off of that screen, 
Ooh. Are you kidding me? Like, this is a play that I will forever be drawing up on a, a paper napkin, remember this moment, because NC State did everything well. The pass was precise, the inbound pass. The screen was perfect because it's so easy to pick up a call for an illegal screen in those situations. And, of course, Jakia Brown-Turner knocks down arguably the biggest shot of her career. Chef's kiss, perfect. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. Obviously, they ended up, unfortunately, losing that game to UConn, who will be playing tonight against South Carolina. Who do you have in this matchup, Moni? Well, you know, because I am not one who believes in switching things up. I am continuing to roll with the South Carolina Gamecocks, Christina Megan. And here's why. I think Aaliyah Boston has been just that dominant. I'm not confident that the Huskies have a formula to slow her down. They will have to, if they're going to, keep her off of the glass because she has been a single woman wrecking ball with offensive rebounds and putbacks. And so that falls a lot on the shoulders of Olivia Nelson Odota and Aaliyah Edwards, excuse me. Beyond that, I think in the last two performances we've seen from South Carolina, their offense has met the level at which their defense has been able to play. They had five players in double digits uh, in the game versus Louisville, and two of those, Victoria Saxon and uh, Bree Bill, to me, are hugely important because all they did was move without the basketball, and their teammates did a great job of finding them and penetrating the defense. And so Paige Beckers has been tremendous. I think AZ Fudd has been a quiet assassin in her own right. Um, I think we're in for a really, really great ball game, but I think the edge is going to wind up in the Gamecocks in favor of the Garnet and Black. And that would be a beautiful situation. I was looking behind you to see if there were UConn fans around you. I think you're good, so um, we'll let you get out of there. <laughs> but thanks so much for joining us, Moni. Gotta go. <laughs> no problem, guys. It is time now for Coach's Corner, presented by Invesco QQQ. We're going to take a look at both of the coaches in tonight's game. And to do that, we bring in our sister, Tarika Foster-Brasby. What's good, girl? How are you? Hey, I am doing wonderful. Living the life here in Minneapolis. Looking for an awesome game tonight. I mean, it looks like it's popping. So I'm excited to have you here. Excited to talk about these two coaches. Let's start with Gino Ariema and just take a quick look at his resume first. Um, he's 11 and 0 in title games, and it's crazy because both these coaches are undefeated in title games. But he's 11 and 0. He does not lose. What do you think is most impressive about him? Yeah, you know what? Gina Oriema is one of the most legendary coaches that I think we've ever seen and will ever see, right? Whenever we hear about Gino, we put him in the same category that we put a Pat Summit. We put him in the same category that we put a Coach K. Like, it's just what he does, right? When you've taken a team to 14 straight Final Fours, when you've been to Final Fours 22 times, when you've won 11 championships, you just don't lose. I don't have the sauce. I don't know how Gino has the <laughs> sauce, but apparently he does. And uh, we're looking forward to see how, he, uh, how that resume stacks up tonight if he continues to walk away undefeated. Megan, you agree with Tarika? Well, Gino has the sauce. He also has a massive wine cellar as well, Tarika. So that may be <laughs> what's going on for him. But what has impressed me most about Coach Oriyama is the fact that he's been so consistent year in and year out. It is so difficult to win at the highest level, which Coach Oriyama has been able to do since he stepped on campus at UConn. And for him to have all those straight Final Fours, 11-0 national championship games, when you can set that consistency bar that high, that's what makes him so impressive to me. Uh, you talk about consistency, and obviously Dawn Staley hasn't had that many opportunities on this stage, but like I said, she is a, she's 1-0 in, in celebrity games or in um, championship games. But before we get to that, we do have to take a look at the WBCA trophy presented by Invesco QQQ, which will be awarded to the national champion of the NCAA Women's National Tournament as we shift our focus now to Dawn Staley. And, you know, she took this job in 2008, and she really changed the program. She's done a lot. And you talked about consistency. She's been very consistent throughout her entire career. Is she the, t is she the coach that can actually beat Gino at this stage? I absolutely believe she can. Listen, one thing that Dawn Staley does and does well is she's able to meet her players where they are. That's what makes her so masterful at being a head coach. And she has elevated and really catapulted this South Carolina team to really being the standard. I mean, they have been the number one team for how long? All season long. She has brought things to this South Carolina team that no other coach has been able to do. They've been to three Final Fours. This is their conse second consecutive Final Four, as a matter of fact. And listen, Dawn said it. We're 1-0. We're 100% too. So we have something that we want to fight for as well. And I still think that they feel a little bit of slight from the 2020 season because that was the season that I think we all thought that they were going to win the championship. And unfortunately, because of the pandemic, we were unable to play a Final Four. We were unable to 
have a tournament. So there's a lot of things that they're looking to redeem themselves to do. And Don Staley is the perfect head coach to help this team to do that. Uh, and obviously, South Carolina beat UConn earlier in the season. Do you feel like Don Staley will be able to lead her team to do that again? I think it's definitely should they're in the best position possible in order to do so. And Coach Staley has been incredibly successful, not only at South Carolina, but throughout her entire career. She was at Temple for years and was able to make that program one of the best teams in the Atlantic 10. But what she's done at South Carolina is truly unbelievable. And like Tarika said earlier, I loved what she said. We're one to know as well. This South Carolina team is playing so well right now. I just don't know very many teams that can handle the size. I think UConn's going to have a chance to tonight. However, in that first matchup, the size in the interior really hurt UConn on down the stretch. Uh, okay, so Tarika, when you look at both of these coaches, who do you think has the coaching advantage going into this national championship game? Well, we have to be fair, and I do think that the advantage goes to Gina Oriema, and simply that's just on experience. Again, the sample size obviously isn't comparable, but Chino has been here. He's been here. He's done it. And when you think about the talent that he's had to coach through these moments, from a Rebecca Lobo to a Sue Bird to a Diana Tarazi to a Maya Moore to a Tina Charles, a Swin Cash, I mean, how much time do we have to really go through this alumni list of players that he's able to take to these types of these moments, these championship moments, and be successful? And that's not to say that Don Staley can't do the same, just simply that he's done it more times than most and has been very successful in doing so. And so you have to give the edge to experience in terms of the coaching advantage. But listen, these two coaches have more in common than I think people realize. They're both from Pennsylvania. She, uh, Gino's from Norristown. Dawn has that North Philly swag. Believe it or not, if you guys, I don't know who remembers this or not, but Gino used to be the assistant coach at Virginia. Dawn Staley went to Virginia. So they, these two have way more in common than I think people really realize. But at the end of the day, I will give the coaching edge to Gino. Both coming from the 215 Philadelphia and both rep the city very <laughs> proudly. I'm going to give hey. Coach Staley the fashion edge when it comes to these oh, two coaches. Sure. But sure. I completely agree with you, Tarika. Oh. That experience she is what sticks edge. up. Like. <laughs> over everybody. She has a fashion, yeah, fashion edge literally over every single one. I had to very meticulously pick what Everyone. shoes I was going to wear because I'm like, I know what's coming up later. But that being said, I think the experience factor right. with Coach Oriama stands out completely. I'm really excited, though, again, for this rematch because UConn's going to want a little bit of revenge of course, coming of into this. They're yeah. the two seed. But South Carolina, like you mentioned, still has that chip on their shoulder. It's almost as if they feel like they're the underdogs in this right. game. Right. Okay, so, Tarika, I I'm going to ask you predictions because obviously, like we said this is a good coaching matchup but the girls have to play on the court so who do you have in this one well I'm about to be in a lot of trouble because I am standing around a ton of UConn fans but I'm giving an edge to South Carolina <laughs> I genuinely think that they are the team <laughs> you see I tried to sneak that in right because I don't I don't want to I don't want to get jumped out here <laughs> but no I I just I genuinely feel like it is South Carolina's year again the way Dawn is able to literally motivate her team to do things that we have not seen and Aaliyah Boston hello she's the best player in the country she's the Naismith player of the year she's more than likely going to win the wooden award at that it is literally hers to lose and I don't think there's anyone on the floor who can beat her it is going to be a battle down the stretch I think to see who absolutely is going to be able to make the hold on let their team hold on the longest who's going to dominate more Paige is going to put on a show but I think Aaliyah Boston has a much larger goal at hand and she's not going to be stopped I said it first actually I didn't say it first Every, like millions of other people said it too <laughs> but I'm going to claim I said it first South Carolina she's the first to say it in front of a bunch of UConn fans we'll give say, her that I was going to say let's, <laughs> let's, uh, let's, let's let you let's let you get away from all those UConn fans after making that that declaration uh thanks so much for joining us see <laughs> have a lot of fun oh guys thanks guys we gotta get Monty out of there gotta get t out there everybody wants south carolina uh <laughs> you're watching countdown to the final presented by invesco qqq and we are just moments away from tip as the girls get ready to play and this is going to be a huge matchup obviously a lot of them a lot of people have been talking about this you have a two seed versus a one seed a lot of people have south carolina in this one i do want to ask you though Outside of Aaliyah Boston and Paige Beckers, is there a player that you feel like we should be watching in this matchup? I think someone who's going to be really big is Olivia Nelson Adota for UConn because there's that size that comes into play. The last time these two teams met, the bigs for UConn were held to a combined 12 points. So South Carolina did an excellent job defensively. However, I'm looking for those types of players, Aaliyah Edwards as well, to step up and have really big games for the Huskies. Uh, so you obviously mentioned the fact that she was huge in that last time that they played, right? Mm -hmm. What does UConn have to do tonight in order to not allow the outcome to be the same one that they that was earlier this season 
Rebound, rebound, rebound the ball. South Carolina leads the nation in rebounding margin with plus 17. The Gamecocks, last time those two teams uh-huh. met, plus 17 rebounding margin. And having that type of advantage is huge in a game because you get more possessions as an offense. So it's going to be massive for UConn to make sure they get a butt and a gut box out and make sure they limit Aaliyah Boston from any touches because, as we've seen, <laughs> she's averaging double figures when it comes to rebounding the ball as, as well as scoring the ball. Uh, a butt in the gut. I love that. Put a butt in the gut and push him out. <laughs> get a creep in face and get the rebound. Back that thing up. Okay. So. <laughs> One of my favorite songs. <laughs> details, details. Um, obviously, okay, let's talk about South Carolina side because they killed UConn last time they played. Mm-hmm. What do they need to do in order to do that again? That one's scoring is going to be key for South Carolina in this game. And we saw that against Louisville. Louisville's a great defensive team. And I thought South Carolina did a nice job handling the press and the pressure. Now, UConn's a team that isn't afraid to switch up defenses. But what's really good about South Carolina is they had five players scoring double figures in that Louisville game. So everyone's playing with a lot of confidence. There's explosive guards on this Gamecock squad. So I think that there's going to be a quickness, a little bit of a quickness advantage if Henderson can get going downhill or Zia Cook can get the ball in her hands as well. I want to talk about Paige Beckers for let's, a little bit. Let's talk about her. Obviously, I mean, she is an absolute bucket, and she was out for a little bit of the season. And when she came back, her last few games have been some of the best yet. So what do you think that you need to see out of her in order for this UConn team to be able to take the home the trophy tonight? UConn guard Paige Beckers, she's Paige Buckets for a reason. She is a mid-range assassin. And in the women's game right now, it's really popular to be able to knock down the three, which she has that ability to do. However, that mid-range game is what separates her and makes her so special because she has the ability to create her own shot. And Beckers is one of the best at creating coming off of ball screens and somehow finding open space, especially around the free throw line. You're going to watch this game tonight and you're going to see how many times she's able to get to the nail and find open looks by elevating over her defenders. So I think she needs to definitely make sure she's getting downhill and getting a lot of ball screen action for her. I know we talked earlier. I do want to talk about a little bit more about Gino and Dawn because I know we talked about the fact that Gino obviously has a lot more experience on this stage. And when you look at like stuff like what would happen in the men's game, even with Coach K and stuff like that, like How much does experience really going into this national championship? Obviously, Dawn has been here, but she's only been here once. How much does experience trump just not being here as many times? I think experience is always going to give you an advantage no matter what task you're doing, but especially in coaching, just because Coach Oriyama understands how to deal with the roller coasters of emotions and of you know flow that happens within the course of a game. But Dawn Staley has been coaching for a very long time. She also understands what it's like to deal with the roller coaster that happens between four quarters. I also really think this South Carolina team has bought into Dawn Staley so much. You can see it with the chemistry mm-hmm. that this team possesses. They love Coach Staley, and I think when you have that trust in one another, it's going to give you an advantage when you have to go against experience. I also know that South Carolina fans absolutely love Coach Staley. The one thing, I was talking to Rebecca Lobo about this because she never wanted to say anything bad about South Carolina because she knew that South Carolina fans would come for her, but the one thing she said, she was like, Don Staley will rile those fans up. Like, they Mm -hmm. all are like, just they all embrace Don Staley as a whole, and so I feel like that's kind of the one reason that Don actually kind of has an advantage in this situation because honestly, South Carolina goes so hard for Don Staley. So I know who I think that I was going to win. I had, um, I spoke to Don on a Twitter space. Ah. And in that moment, I was like, I cannot choose any other team <laughs> other than South Carolina. And this is before the tournament even started. I was like, yeah, I got South Carolina. The game cost going all the way. Who do you have in this matchup? I agree with you. I do think this is South Carolina's game to lose simply because the Gamecocks are playing so well right now. Aaliyah Boston coming off a 23-point performance, including 18 rebounds. I think the size advantage that – South Carolina possesses is going to be massive in this game. Um, Who's going to be able to stop Aaliyah Boston? Because like we saw, she can she can shoot the three and she puts a butt in the gut. Is that is that what we say? Butt in the gut, back them out. You got to back that thing up. Back it up. Is anybody going to be able to stop her tonight? I think so. I think it's going to be really big for a player like Olivia Nelson Adota or Aaliyah Edwards to be able to come in and try to show that size and length down low in the paint. But boxing her out and trying to just make her uncomfortable in situations is going to be key for South Carol or for UConn rather. To do to South Carolina. All right. Well, we'll see what's happen- what happens. It's going to be so stinking good. I can't believe that it's already over. Like, March Madness is it over. It flew by. It's insane. It did. It's Absolutely. Insane. But I'm so excited that you got to hang out with us Thank tonight. Thank you. I know. How great. And we matched colors. Yeah, we did that on purpose, guys. We never <laughs> met ever before, but we did that on, pur- on purpose. Anyways, thank you for watching Countdown to the Final presented by Invesco QQQ. Go watch Women's Hoops right now. It's the last game of the season. Don't miss it. It's going to be so good. South Carolina taking on UConn. We'll see you next time.